there are just a little more than 24 hours left until Thanksgiving, and all I can think about is food. So rather than fight it, I've chosen to embrace it. And I've enlisted one of the best in the business to join me. You may know her by her catchphrase. Tutti a tavola a mangiare. I love that. That would be the great Lydia Bastianich, host of Lydia's Kitchen on PBS. She's celebrating her 25th year on public TV this fall. She'll be at Italy, Boston on December 6th. But first, she joins me here on Greater Boston from one of her restaurants in New York. Becco, Lydia's a two-time Emmy Award winner, seven-time James Beard Award-winning chef, best-selling cookbook author, and the restaurateur behind Italy. Good to see you, Lydia. Oh, pleasure being on the show. Thank you for having me, Jim. So, Lydia, you're just signing books, you told me, at Becco. What's a typical day in the life of Lydia Bastianich? What do you do all day? <laughs> it's all about food. Uh, well, you know, I do, uh, I do visit my restaurants on a regular basis, talk with the chef, talk the menu. Then I do events like this, book signing. I do uh, cooking classes at Italy, at our store Italy. And I travel. And, you know, Italy is across the United States. And so I traveled, you know, I'm coming uh, to Boston again. I've been not too long ago. Uh, and, uh, and it's all about food and traveling and spreading the good word. Well, you're not doing any of those things on Thanksgiving because you told Marjorie Egan and me on the radio, you're cooking for 22 family and friends, which is just terrifying to me. So let's think oh. small. What's the secret to the perfect turkey on Thanksgiving, Lydia? Well, I, I think it's, you know, getting a good turkey, you know, and I, I like a natural turkey, no uh, hormones, none of that stuff. An actual turkey. Uh, I, yeah, I like to season it well two days before, leave it in the refrigerator, let it dry nice, and then uh, you put it uh, in the oven. But I take a cheesecloth and I put some melted butter, some wine, mm. some seasoning, and then I soak the cheesecloth and cover the bird with that and periodically go back and forth and baste the bird with the juices and the vegetables that are in the roasting pan. The question is not to over uh, cook it, certainly so with a thermometer, you know, make sure that you, 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 you're on time. And you know what I do at the end when I remove the cheesecloth? I take a little bit of balsamic reduction and I brush the bird about a half an hour before, mm. and it's delicious. It becomes nice mahogany color. So, uh, you know, it's good products and simple preparations. So just text me and tell me what time to come over. You know, speaking of coming <laughs> over, I'm cooking for six on Thanksgiving. I love cooking, but when people are coming over, I'm caused great anxiety. Did you feel anxiety a bunch of years ago when two people named Julia Child and James Beard walked into your restaurant? <laughs> to check out your risotto? I certainly did. You know, I remember, you know, I, when they walked through the door, I was from, peeking from the kitchen window and I saw these two big, humongous figures uh, coming, coming uh, in, because they were both big. And uh, uh, I, I did get a little palpitations, but you know what? If you know what you're doing, you're sure of yourself, you do the best that you can and you move on. So. A little palpitation is good. The adrenaline is going. You're going to do a great job. Well, yeah, it's easy for you to say. You know, you obviously developed a relationship with her. I know you took her to a house. And ultimately, she had you on her show. And by the way, we have some fabulous footage. This is from a 1993 episode of Julia Child's show, Cooking with Master Chefs. You were the featured master chef that day. And after uh, you demonstrated the recipe, they, you all ate together at the dinner table, three generations of your family there. And yeah, it's that's just, my house. It's really, it is, look at, oh my God, look at that. That is just <laughs> incredible. And by the way, it's fair to say, were it not for those appearances on Julia Child's show after you met her, there wouldn't be 25 years of you on PBS, would there? Uh, well, no, she was actually very instrumental. That show kind of put me in front of a lot of people. And the producer says, you know, Lydia, you're pretty good. Uh, how about a show? And she really egged me on. She says, Lydia, you can do it. You can do for Italian food what I did for French food. And so she was with me. We remained friends until the very end. And uh, I must say that, you know, I really studied her, her mannerism on television, the way she was concerned about the viewers understanding and ultimately cooking. And I think that's what, you know, uh, a show is all about. It's, you know, if you have the viewers give you half an hour of their time, they better take something away from that show. 
Well, I think 25 years is the proof is in the pudding. So I'm assuming a couple of popes, Benedict and Francis, must have been watching the show and said, hey, I like that woman and what she does, no? Yeah, I, you know, I had the honor of cooking for both of them when they came here to the United States. And you, there I got a little apprehensive, you know, what do you cook the Pope? Especially the first one was Ratzinger, Pope Ratzinger. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, but, you know, it's, it's, I still pinch myself. Is it possible? Not one, but two, two, two Popes. Let me tell you, they love to eat, they have their wine, they love dessert. And uh, it was it was wonderful, you know, because when popes travel, they don't sleep in hotels or, or eat in restaurants. Mm -hmm. They go to the nuncio's house, which is the uh, the ambassador to the United Nations. So I moved in with the pope for the three days. Moved in with the pope. That's an expression most of us are not able to use, I should say, Lydia. <laughs> Hey, Lydia, so 25 years of doing this, do you step back at all? I know you're as busy as any person on the planet and think about how different things are on both sides of the camera, both in terms of you as teacher and the viewer as student 25 years in. I, I think that all the time, you know, I feel a certain responsibility uh, and I feel a, a lot of gratitude and reward in the position that I have. The responsibility is that I convey the simplest, the, the, the true Italian cuisine, because I'm a conduit of a cuisine. I'm not a chef inventor. And so I have that responsibility that what's happening in Italy, I bring to my home here in America, now my new home. And then uh, the responsibility that they out there go and do it and cook. And you sort of, I, when I get an, uh, an email and say, Lydia, you empower me. I feel good. I feel I can do it. That's the ultimate. I really, that I feel like, oh, I did my job. Do you still learn things from your work? Do you learn new things about cooking? And All the time. Like, like All what, the time. give me something in recent times that was it's new to Lydia Bastianich. It's, it's endless. You know, I go to Italy three, four times a year, you know, uh, certainly now that COVID is over. And I do just that. I visit family, but I do research. And I go to, now Italy has 20 regions. Mm -hmm. So I travel to whichever regions I feel, you know, because each region sort of shines in a different time of the year, you know, the, uh, and so like now in October, November, I would go up in Piemonte, you know, the truffles, the porcini, the, all of that. But one of, some of the latest things, you know, in the Southern regions of Italy, whether it's Puglia, which is the heel or Sicily or, or Calabria, those are the regions that sort of, I found some of the things because I'm from the North, so that I didn't know. Like like now it's all over the place, but let's say a few years, colatura di alici. Now colatura di alici is fish sauce. The, the, the uh, uh, Chinese have it all the time. They use it all the time. The Italian savage is something different. But uh, you know, I didn't, uh, that, and you know what colatura di alici is? You know, when the anchovies are made and they're sort of sprinkled with salt and then the pressure is put on them and that water that that sort of seeps out that kind of fermented juice of the of the alici of the sardines and the salt and all that that's what that sort of uh, intense flavor of the colatura di alici and it's great it is sort of brings an umami dish to to a dish of pasta risotto soups and so on let me just say if it tastes one tenth as good as it sounds it's a hit lydia <laughs> happy thanksgiving it's great to see you Thank you. Same to you, to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Listen, relax. Don't be so uptight. <laughs> you're, you're, give them, you know what? Give them a good bottle of wine. Some nice wine, and it's you'll be deal. just fine. It's a deal. You're working your magic again. Lydia, see you soon. Okay. Ciao, ciao.